know, my fair cousin, if we are marks to die, then we are enough to do our country loss. And if to live the few men, the greatest share of honor. God's will, I pray thee, wish not one man more. Rather proclaim it, Westmoreland, through my host, that he which have no stomach for this feast, let him depart. His passport shall be drawn and crowned for convoy, put into his purse. We would not die in that man's company who fears his fellowship to die with us. This day is called the Feast of Crispian. He who outlives this day and comes safe home will stand at tiptoe when this day is named and rouse him at the name of Crispian. He who outlives this day and sees old age will yearly on the vigil feast his neighbors and say, tomorrow is some Crispian. Then will he strip his sleeve and show his scars and say, these wounds I had on Crispian's day, old men forget, yet all shall be forgot but here remember with advantages what feats he did that day. Then shall our names familiar in his mouth as household words. Harry the King, Bedford and Exeter, Warwick and Talbot, Slawsby and Gloucester, be in their flowing cups freshly remembered. This story shall the good man teach his son. And Crispian, Crispian shall ne'er go by from this day to the ending of the world. But we in it shall be remembered. We few, we happy few, we band of brothers. For he today that sheds his blood with me shall be my brother, be he ne'er so base. And gentlemen of England now abed shall think themselves a curse they were not here. And hold their manners cheap while any speaks that fought with us upon St. Crispin's Day.